Hi, Daily Church family. It's Jordan. I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day today. Today, we're opening our Bibles right here to Acts 25, and we're going to be learning about trusting God's sovereignty. Are you able to trust God in your life? Maybe you're struggling in your life, and you're trying to figure out if you can trust God or not. Well, my friends, God has great plan for you today, and you're going to learn about today about God's amazing sovereignty in your life. Today, if you're Daily Church, I want to say welcome to the family. Here at Daily Church, our vision for you is to develop and deploy you into the the ministry that God has for you. And one of the ways that we do this is to help you start a daily church. If you're watching church today from all the world, stick around. We've got a great message for you. So today, let's see what God will do in your life as we read Acts 25 about trusting in God's sovereignty. We believe when you know Jesus Christ, everything changes. Daily church helps people grow daily in their relationship with God. Welcome to daily.church. Today, many people are fearful. They're living in fear because they don't know what's going to happen in their life. Today, many people are face false accus accusations or misunderstandings, or they're getting unjust treatment in their life, or they're feeling frustrated by how life is working out for them. Today, maybe that's you. Maybe you don't know how it's all going to work out. Maybe you're feeling frustrated. Maybe you're feeling hopelessness in your life. Maybe you're desiring to make it right, but you don't know how to do it. My friend, we all struggle with these things. We all struggle with being in control of our situation and feeling that the more we try to be in control, the more we don't have control over life. We don't have control over the problems of life. I don't know, many of you may be struggling because you realize in this life, things are out of control and out of your control. I feel that all the time, but I have hope. There is a God who knows you, who sees you, a God who is over control of every situation and event that's happening in your life, and a God who has a great promise for you today, if you'll hear his voice. Today, my goal for you is to hear the voice of God, to hear God's voice so strongly that you can trust and his sovereign plan for your life. Today, through faith in God, we can understand God's powerful sovereignty and stand firm in the midst of every trial that we're in. We can trust in God's justice and we can find peace and purpose in even the most difficult cir circumstances. Today, as we begin this message, you know, we're talking about Acts 25 in the Bible and Paul is encountering just trials, right? He's actually standing before Felix, the governor, and also before King Agrippa in the Roman Empire. And he's facing these charges against him that are not true. But here Paul is standing up for the God who saved him, standing up for his faith in Jesus, undergoing intense persecution but trusting in God's plan for his life today. Many of you, if you want to trust in God, he's got a great plan for you, but it, but it takes us knowing the God who can save us, a God who loves us, a God who died for us. Today, before we begin this message, let's pray. Invite God to come and speak to every one of us. Dear God, we thank you for this moment. We know that you have a great plan for our lives, yet we can't always see this, we can't always see you. We can't always see the plan that you have, but we can trust you, God. We trust you today. We trust that you have a sovereign plan. And we, we know that even in the midst of a storm in our life, that you are going to deliver us. We pray for every person listening right now that you would speak to them, open their ears and their heart to hear your words today. We know that, that faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so as we pray, as we hear the word of God, that Holy Spirit, you would speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, let's read right now. Acts 25, if you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to be learning about trusting in God's sovereignty. What is God's sovereignty all about? It's God's, really, it's his plan that he has created for you and for me. And nothing can thwart the plan of God. There's nothing that can destroy the plan of God. If God wants to save you, you're going to be saved. If God wants to deliver you, you're going to be delivered. If God wants to bless you, you're going to be blessed. There's no way around it because God is sovereign and his way goes. Let me ask you this question. How have you maintained integrity when you're falsely accused? How have you maintained integrity when you're falsely accused? I think about a Bible story of Joseph and he is accused by Potiphar's wife. It's found in Genesis 39. And he's, he's accused of something he didn't even do. There's many people in the Bible that were accused, falsely accused. Jesus Christ was falsely accused 
for sin, even though he never sinned, he never did anything wrong, and he was put on the cross before it. Today, maybe you're facing a persecution or a circumstance that you're wrongly accused, and you don't know how to defend yourself. It's okay. God will defend you. God will come through for you. You don't have to worry or fear. Let's read about this in Acts 25, 7 and verse 8. It says, When he arrived, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing many and serious charges against him that they could not prove. This is the Apostle Paul. And then verse 8. Eight, Paul ar argued in his defense, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I committed any offense. So here Paul is standing uh, up against all these accusations that are false. God has put uh, Paul divinely in the court in Rome and you know, even the the, uh, the governors have to listen to Paul's message because God had suddenly put him there. And here Paul is giving uh, you know, telling him about the telling them about the gospel and the hope he has, even in the face of all these unfall or these false accusations. So Paul, Paul faces numerous false ab, uh, accusations without any evidence, but Paul maintains his innocence and integrity even through his defense. And despite the charges, Paul, Paul remains com, um, composed and relies on the truth. This is what Paul was all about, right? And so think about this. Paul was facing many persecutions, being falsely accused, but he stood firm in his God to deliver him. He stood firm in trusting God's great plan, even though he couldn't see it. I'm sure Paul was questioning why he was there, why he was standing before these rulers who are accusing him falsely. But Paul trusted that my God is bigger than all of this. God is in control of events and circumstances. Why? Because my God is sovereign. Today, remember, you can face, uh, when you face circumstances or trials or accusations that are false, remember, there's a God who knows everything and will deliver you. All right, truth number two, as we read in Acts 25, is God's plan takes trusting in God's sovereignty. God's plan takes trusting in God's sovereignty. Do you trust God's plan today? Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to be real. You say, Jordan, I, I don't know if I can trust God. I don't know if I can trust his plan. I don't know if he really is looking out for me. I don't know if he really cares that much to actually deliver me or take care of me. You know, many to, of you today are struggling. Maybe you're struggling financially. You're saying, hey, I'm living for God, but I don't feel like he's coming through for me. How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay for my car? How am I going to get food on the table? How, how is this all going to work out? And you're in that situation. Can you really trust God? That God really loves you? That God is really taking care of you? That God sees you? That God has a plan? In the midst of those situations, we don't always see God at work, but God is at work. He's at work in your life. I think of the story of David, David, uh, King David in, in 1 Samuel 24, that David was a man after God's own heart, and David went through so many trials. But he, in the midst of his trials, when Saul was persecuting him, Saul was trying to kill him, he had to trust that God was, take, was watching out for him, that God had called him to be a king of Israel, right? Anointed uh, King David at a young age. And then all this, all this uh, crazy uh, persecution happened to David, right? But God had this amazing plan that in the future would unfold. But at the moment, David didn't understand how it was going to work out. Today, many of you are trying to figure out how it's all going to work out. Can you trust in God's plan? Let's read about Paul and how he trusted in God's plan in Acts 25, 10 and 11. But Paul said, I'm standing before Caesar's tribunal where I ought to be tried. To the Jews, I have done no wrong, as you yourself know very well. If then I am a wrongdoer, I have and committed anything which I deserve to die. I do not speak to escape death. But if there is nothing of the charges against me, no, uh, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. So here he, Paul is defending his own life, done nothing wrong. But Paul shows us how he trusted in God, right? This is a perfect example of how we can trust in God and God's plan that it's sovereign, right? Paul was in the situation. He didn't want to be in the situation, but he was in the situation. God had put him there. Maybe you're in a situation that God is putting you in, but you don't know how it's all going to work out. You don't understand why you're, you're in the situation. 
But in the spite of this unfair treatment, Paul was honest. He trusted in God. And Paul's uh, confidence came from God's plan and his decision to take action saying, hey, I'm innocent and you can do whatever you want with me, but I know the God who can deliver me and has delivered my soul. Today, trust in God's plan is purpose for your life, even when facing unjust treatment or difficult circumstances. All right, last truth, truth number three in Acts 25, believers are rooted in God's courage. Believers are rooted in God's courage, you know? Many people today are rooted in their money. They're rooted in, you know, their big house. Maybe they're rooted in their cool, amazing job that they have. But when you're rooted in those things, those things can go down at any time. And when they do, your life is completely destroyed because you're rooting yourself in things that are temporary. They're not eternal. My friend, when we root ourselves in God, God sustains us throughout this life because God's will and way and plan is eternal. And so today, believers are rooted in God's courage. When we're rooted in God, we have God's peace, we have his promise, but we also have his courage. Daniel's life in Daniel in the lion's den, right, in Daniel 6, was just a, a, a picture of what courage looks like. Daniel could have given up on his faith, but he had faith because he wasn't rooted on his, you know, success. He wasn't, he wasn't rooted on you know his outer appearance and what people thought of him no he was rooted in his uh relationship with god and because of that daniel had courage to withstand the lions in the lion's den acts 25 12 and 23 say this then felix um and then festus when he had uh conferred with his counsel answered to caesar i have appealed to caesar shall you go so the next day Grippa and Bernice came the great group up and they entered the audience hall with many uh, military tribunes and prominent men of the city. Then at the commander of Festus, Paul was brought in. So here we have Paul coming in. He's meeting now with Caesar, right? And so if you think about it, Paul is speaking to Felix and then he gets moved up to King Agrippa. And what God is doing is that God is orchestrating through his sovereign plan that Paul was going to speak to certain people. Go to the Gentiles, speaking to the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles bring him before Felix. Now he speaks to Felix. And then he goes to, to King Agrippa. So what is God doing? He's got this plan that's unfolding. It looks like a trial to Paul. It could be very discouraging, right? Because here Paul is, he's done nothing wrong, and yet he's undergoing all this persecution. But God has sovereignly put him in these places to speak to certain people that God is trying to reach. So Paul... Is, in, is actually has courage as he's facing these high authorities with confidence in his God. And despite the intimidation of the situation, Paul remains unshaken. Remember today, when you put your trust in God's sovereign plan and you trust him with your life, you remain unshakable. We call this courage, but it's you remain unshakable. Do you want to be an unshakable person today, an unshakable believer in Jesus? Put your trust in God your trust and hope in Jesus. Today be rooted not in what you see, but be rooted in God's sovereign plan today. Today, when you root yourself in God's sovereign plan, he's able to give you courage and you can do amazing things with God in your life. Today, as we wrap up this message, remember this, this message is titled Trusting God's Sovereignty. And we've learned three powerful truths. Number one, believers hold to integrity in trials. Number two, God's plans takes trusting in God's sovereignty. And number three, believers are rooted in God's courage. Today, do you want to be rooted in God? Do you want to trust God right now for his sovereign plan to take place in your life? Many of you today don't have a relationship or haven't started a relationship with God and you're wanting to do that. Today, I want to invite you right now to start a personal relationship with God. And all it takes is believing. All it takes is faith. It's very, very simple. You know, God says to have faith like you, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. And it also says, you know, you have to have faith like a child. All it takes is childlike faith to come into God's kingdom and to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? It means to be made new again by God's grace. So let's today, wherever you're at, we're going to pray. Before we pray, I want to share the good news of Jesus with you. What is the good news? We call this the gospel. And the gospel is simply this, that God loves you. God loves you. Wherever you're at today. If you've never heard that before, hear this. God loves you. And how do we know that God loves us? 
Well, we read John 3, 16 in the Bible. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. My friend, God wants to give you eternal life. That's his plan for you. And you can embrace his plan or you can reject his plan. My friend, we all the Bible also says we're all sinners. What does that mean? It means we're all we've all we're all messed up. We're we've all done bad things. We all we no one has a perfect life. Name think of think of yourself. Have you lived a perfect life? Is your life perfect? You've never done anything wrong? Of course, we've all done things wrong. We've all messed up. But here's the thing, do you have forgiveness? Have you do you have peace with God? Today you can. This is why Jesus came. God came to remove our sin as far as the east is from the west. He came to redeem us, to give us a new life and a new hope through the powerful resurrection of Christ and what he did for us on the cross. See, Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life, died for our sin on a cross. He took your sin, your shame, your guilt, died in your place, and then three days later he rose again to give you and I a new life. Jesus defeated death and sin forever to all those who believe, to all those who put their faith in him. The Bible says that, you know, all we have to do is believe. Just believe. Salvation is near to those that believe. Today, if you want salvation, you want hope, you want your sins to be forgiven, we can pray right now. Let's pray wherever you are and invite Christ into our life. Dear God, thank you for this moment. Thank you that you want to, to start a relationship with me. Today, I realize that you're knocking on the door of my heart, asking me for a relationship. Today, I open the door of my life to you. God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. Today, I ask that you would cleanse me from all my sin. Make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you from this moment on. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Today, if that's you, you said, I believe in Jesus. I want to say, welcome to the family of God. Your sins have been forgiven. You have a new relationship with God. Now go and tell people that have never heard about this gospel, the hope that you've just found. Tell their people about him. Read the Bible. You know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. And when you open up this Bible, you read it like we're doing right now with Daily Church, chapter by chapter, you're hearing the voice of God. And when you hear the voice of God, God's plan begins to unfold in your life. You find hope, you find salvation, you find restoration, you find peace, and you find a new life that God has planned for you. Today, if you made that decision to follow Christ, reach out to me here, Pastor Jordan at daily.church. We have churches all over the world. Find a church that you can connect in with, get discipled, help uh, reach out to other people that are believers, and, and they will walk with you as you follow Christ together. Today, you're not alone. You're with us, and uh, God has a great plan. So remember this. Go in God's grace. Go in his peace. And remember that God has a great plan for your life. Amen. Join us as we take the good news of Jesus Christ to every nation. Now is the time to give to your local church and support your pastor. Every donation you give goes to supporting your church. Your giving helps us reach more people for Christ as we start new daily churches together. Thank you for your support. God bless.